So one of the stages of um, doing the turbo build is I'm upgrading the fuel pump. Um, it's I've been told if you're looking for a 250, 270 brake, I think you can use the standard pump. So I have put this as an extra, um, but I wanted everything done. I wanted um, not to have any issues. I didn't really want to max out the pump. One of the main ones um, in the UK um, was a, I think it's a DW pump and it's a 340 litres per hour, which is way over the top for what this is. Um, definitely not needed and I've had issues in the past where um, the pump's been um, overrated and basically I've heated up the fuel in other projects because you're, you're pushing through the system so much and not needing it. So what I've gone for is I've gone for a quantum um, pump and um, I'll just show you that one. So quantum fuel systems, um, as far as I know, I can only really get it from America. I got this through Amazon UK, um, ordered it at a reasonable price and didn't pay any um, import or anything like that. So to have a quick look at this, comes with a new um, filter sock um, that goes onto the bottom of the pump, comes in with the, the two um, O-rings that go onto the, the top port. This is the pump. This is a 240 um, litre per hour pump. Um, so no, nowhere near as much as a 340, which is overkill. What you've got to understand is, and, this, um, and I tried this out to make sure, is there's a lot of um, Walbro pumps that are used in the MX-5 Mark 1s, Mark 2s. But what they are, is this actually goes into um, a plastic canister within the car. And the wall bro that's widely widely available at the two sort of 60 litre is a 39 millimetre body. And annoyingly, you need a 38 millimetre body, which is why there aren't that many pumps out there for the Mark III. So I believe it's um, the Quantum one, you've got the DW range. Don't, I haven't used them before, but I've just read a few things on the forum that made me um, stay away from them. Um, so I've gone for the Quantum, 38 mil, should fit straight into the um, the plastic um, fitting within here and then this all clips on the bottom um, of that so let's see I think most of the car needs to come apart to do this so uh, let's get it sorted so I've taken off the side kick plate There's lots of uh, these clips you know, pretty self-explanatory just get your nail or a screwdriver behind pull it that releases it and you can pull the clip out. So this um, top section here, you had one pin here, pull that pin out and then basically um, pull this edge forward, add two clips that go in here, pull that forward and then lift the whole thing upwards. There's a clip there that was holding it in. So that's now off, that's good took the sill piece off and then what we had um, then what we had was this piece sorry bad camera we had this piece on here I couldn't work out how to get rid of this off but what you do is this is just pinned on with clips so you pull this forward it rotates on that front that front bit and just pulls off so as simple as that center wind deflector all you do get a screwdriver underneath gently just prise it up and it's just kept in with these little clips here so that's that off so now we've got all the side bits gone um, i believe it's going to be popping these off um, getting this panel forward got some of those nice plastic um, panel um, clips, removers, those kind of things, tools, use those. I'll just make sure you know. Those two is removed. So you've got to uh, remove the centre console. Um, it's fairly easy. Um, you pop this back panel. Back panel. There's 
two screws at the back. There is one screw underneath this front cup holder, and then the clips at the front pop and it pulls back. Obviously, you need to take your uh, gear lever off, um, but this will be fairly straightforward. You need to undo the screws for the rear section for this bit. soft top you've got this lever so the levers on here there's two pins behind pinch those two pins together and that comes straight off so now you're ready to pull this back panel forward I believe there's just you've taken all the little pins out and then it's just got a quite a few clips to move it forward the one go there scary when you're on plastic things and you just basically have to pull. Um, try not to bend it from far, far out, try and get sort of your hand in nearer to where the clip is and pull. So you've got this cover panel and under there is the fuel pump. Fancy fuel fixings, the uh, ooh, hello. green one there. So, I've got one of these laser tools, haven't used it yet, so let's hope this works. And then this slides on, you push it in, and hopefully it'll pop off. That's the idea. fuel line disconnected and you smell it pretty much quick enough so um, you've got this outer ring so you take all the little screws off let's come out a little bit shall we take all the screws off that go around this ring that's then released this is your fuel pump housing I've got that off obviously I'm going to try not to make fuel go everywhere phone down for a second so with it out so there's a bit of I've had this out recently I had the tank out from the bottom annoyingly I didn't do the pump at the same time I only decided later so this was the only way to get to it but there was some corrosion I even had um, one of the screws a couple of the screws snap off originally so I had to um, tap them out and uh, replace them with different screws but hopefully you won't have those issues and then you've got the uh, the units out so let's go have a look at that all right, let's have a look at the, uh, the pump. Or the pump housing. Try and keep as much debris away from fuel and you don't want it going in your tank. Right, I've had this part once. Let's see if I can remember. Basically your pump is in this module here, that's the wiring going into it, so you're trying to get um, that out. I believe there's a clip here, you can take the assembly unit, because that's one side, then clip that way.
go, and then that's that center section is released. There's your horrible, mucky old uh, filter that you're going to be replacing. Looking pretty, uh, pretty mucky compared to this new one. Right. Clips. This is quite easy. Got some clips around this. So I'll take some measurements. Like I said, 38. It's amazing just the difference. So if I push that out to 39, that's why the Woolbury pump doesn't fit. So 38 mil wide. I've not measured this one. <laughs> Let's hope it's 38 more wide. Yeah, 38. Right, so, they give you two O-rings with this one. So there's an O-ring already in there, so I think I need to try and get that out. There's a little clip on here. So pull that clip off. That's a new one. But then there's a lot of stories about people struggling to get these O-rings into this um, insert in here. So I'm guessing that's why they give you some super lube. Um, let's uh, lube that up. Well, I guess it doesn't actually need to go on that bit. But anyway, put some of these rubbers. Lube on. Now, if you want to line it up. There we go. This is going to be when we struggle like everyone else did. Nice new um, clean filter. Gonna let it get a little bit of brake clean for my fingerprints. Let's get this all back together. Okay, so you place this over the top, it then um, lines up with that peg. Clip onto those clips there. 
and feed in this back here. So then these clips are sliding over the back here. This one's going over the front. Clips in there. Oh, as always, you can't get everything in at the same time. I am making this look very hard. The front one's not in. Oh my god. all in and then we need um, this piece clips back in send the unit goes on that rib there goes down that's in the seal if it's come off these longer pins they go to the top so um, you're putting that back on obviously stick through these little these screws and that's how it goes in Get the sender unit back in the car. Not sender unit, fuel pump. This top is sprung, so we have to push it down with the output plate. So the bigger hole here is where I believe is where the seal goes through. No, it's not. It's the small one. coming through, the poles are lining up. Obviously this, this is sprung and there isn't much thread on the screws so I wouldn't just screw one in and hope it's going to hold. I'd keep pressing down, get another one in. A little bit safer if we had about four in. together so uh, you saw the video on how to put it uh, take it apart so uh, reversal of that 